This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. Welcome to a special edition of Couples Court. We're taking a break from hearing cases to look back at some of the most outrageous moments that have taken place in our courtroom. There have been moments of joy, moments of shock, and moments of heartbreak. And with heartbreak, a lot of other things get broken, busted, and torched in the process. Just take a look at this. I go back to the front of the house and I look and that's when I see a woman. I instantly punch the window out. I got my car and I I hit him. Bam on the door three times and he didn't answer. So I, so I went to the door and I just kicked it in, honey. And they say hell has no fury like a woman scored. But it's our experience here at Couples Court that men get a little hot under the collar when they think they're being cheated on. Now where there's smoke, there's often fire. And in this case, Mr. Harmon was so certain that his fiance was cheating that he took out his anger on her wedding dress. Watch this. I proceeded to go in the bathroom and find my dress laying there burnt. I was like, what happened to it? You know, he's like, oh, well, um, see what happened was. I got it caught on a cigarette. Mr. Harmon, did you burn her dress? Yes, I did. Okay. Why did you set the dress on fire? Because I was mad. It wasn't... Intentionally, it was like out of spite. What was running through your mind as you building up? Like you her, her, her seeing her ex-boyfriend and her lying to me and her with her co-working, the, the hidden galleries in the phone, like, that, it gets to me sometimes. You know, I think about it, so I just took it and I just, you know, set it on fire. And it, so when I stomped it, I just okay. threw it in the bathroom so she can come home and look at it, because it's the first place she go, because she's always in that mirror. He was hurt and he was hot, but it was definitely not the right thing for him to do. We have an update from them. Watch this. It was Reese Long Couples Court here about a month ago. Uh, because he thought I was cheating and yes, I was not. Yes. He pretty so, much trusts me now because right. he knows I was not lying. Right. Thank y'all for everything. We really support y'all. We really with the movement and <laughs> thank y'all. Get a kiss, Doug. You're making it. <laughs> now, that wasn't the only case where suspicions of cheating led to a fire. Ms. Jones got fed up with her husband's questionable behavior and she took out her anger on his wardrobe. She said I smelled like sex. She went crazy, burnt all my new clothes. I just bought everything. She went in the back and went crazy on them. All right, Miss Jones, did you do what he's saying you did? She yes, I did. <laughs> That's what, straight out of waiting to exhale, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Miss Jones says as soon as they got home, they started counseling and they are taking things day by day. There's another case that was outrageous for a number of reasons. Here's a reminder. She was so basic. I'm bad, she's not. So it didn't even cross my mind that this could be a woman that he's like involved with. So Mr. Pearson, your girlfriend knocks on the door and finds you're living with another woman. How does that happen? Your Honor, this was a friend from the past, okay? She was down on her luck. She came to me last minute asking me if, if she can stay with me. And is she still living with you? No. Okay, so when she was living with you, were you ever sexually active no. with her? I'm trying to figure out why you didn't tell your girlfriend. I thought it was to be a quick turnaround, like maybe 90 days. How long did it take you to get on your feet? Doesn't 90 that... days? Your friend would have stayed there for three months without you telling your girlfriend? I mean, ain't that a probationary period? Like, that's like, that's like 90 days, like. Ms. Turkey, what do you hope for for this relationship? I hope that he is not cheating. Like, maybe he did a little bit in the beginning when we first met, that's fine. But once we establish a relationship, like, there is no reason to cheat after that. You got all this. Why would you mess that up? Well, there it is. The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. I can't believe you would do this to me for some basic Well, just because someone has made a mistake doesn't mean the relationship is over. So what do you think? Is it over between Ms. Turchie and Mr. Pearson? I did find out that he was, in fact, lying and cheating on me. I just feel like now our relationship will be even stronger. I've, now I know the truth, and I'm gonna be using that moving forward. Thank you, Couples Court. As we saw, people get outraged after the truth is revealed. And as we've seen in our courtroom, there are often three sides to every story. Ms. Perkins brought her photographer husband to court after she found seductive photographs of a half-naked woman taken in their bed. Take a look. Mr. Curry. Yeah. Did you sleep with this woman? No, Your Honor, I did not. So you just lied on the bed up in your house on your wife's sheets taking pictures? Now, the half-naked woman. Why the half-naked woman, yes. That's like a, po a picture that you will post on Instagram saying that thank you for working with this person here. You are not buying any of this. No. 
Have you ever had sexual relations with Mr. Courier? No. I mean, it was just harmless flirting. I gotta go with the lie detector test in these pictures. They all indicate that you had sexual contact with Ms. Adams. Ms. Adams, so what really happened when you took these pictures? Drew, you are my friend. But, I mean, you have to be honest sometimes. So what happened? Did you all have sex? Yeah. Whoa! I was not expecting the mistress to come clean. Did the couple stay together? Let's find out. Me and him decided that we was just gonna call it quits and get a divorce and continue to work as parents together and co-parent. It's unfortunate that Ms. Perkins and Mr. Courier couldn't salvage their marriage. True. We have to take a break, and we'll have more outrageous couples court moments when we come back. Couples Court is back, and today we're bringing you some of the wildest, most outrageous moments that we've seen and heard in our courtroom. Cutler, people have a dozen reasons for cheating, but one of the most outrageous reasons I've heard comes from an online article saying that most men cheat because the woman looked really hot. In the case of Vani versus McKellop, the defendant used a similar excuse for past infidelity. Well, like she said, she's a porn star, <clears throat> so. <laughs> Oh, yes, Mr. McKellar. We'll get more into that case later. But first, let's look at some of the outrageous things people have brought to court as evidence. This is what I'm used to. You know what I mean? This is what I'm married, right here. This is her now. You know what I mean? While I'm at work. OK, so it looks like you've got some handprints on the top of the car. Why would the top be dusty and not the side? Well, she's, um, you know? <laughs> oh. This is my, my side. <laughs> For 10. <laughs> this is the size that I found, a four. Oh, wow. I haven't wore a size four since I was 19 or 20 years old. And because I'm in crazy mode, I'm like looking now. And you know what? I find is a bra. Yeah, in the car. Those were pretty crazy. But do you remember in the case of Thomas versus Mooney, I had to call my own mother to make sense of the evidence. Take a look. I found some lotion, some sweet smelling lotion. Oh, this is the type of lotion I found. He said that's his mom's lotion. And his mom is 70 and disabled. And this is the type of lotion my mom used. OK, let me see okay. that. <laughs> hello? Mom? Hey, hello? Mom, I'm in court. I got a case in front of me. Me and Mr. Cutler are having this dialogue about whether or not a mature woman would use a fruity scent. What kind of lotion would you use, Mother? Well, I use the classic lotions, the ones with a subtle or mild fragrance. So would you use a fruity scent like strawberries or peaches or anything like that? No, that's for young women. I'm too old for that. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. Now, we're not done. After the break, we'll have more couples court moments. We'll be right back. So welcome back to today's special update edition of Couples Court. We have a multiple choice question for you. According to a recent study, 36% of men and women who admit to cheating claim they had an affair with A, their brother or sister-in-law. B, a neighbor. C, a coworker. D, a member of their church. The answer is C, a coworker. 36% of men and women admit to having affairs with a coworker. Additionally, 17% of people have admitted to cheating with a sister or brother-in-law. These next couples were accused of infidelity a little too close to home. In this case, Miss Barker accused her husband of sleeping with one of her family members. We get into an argument. Instead of us putting hands, I like to take a walk and walk it off, you know? I come back after calming down. I check in my kid's room. Mr. Davis is in my kid's bed with my family member. In his boxes, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, you checking your head? No. That morning, was cleaning up in the kid's room, just cleaning up, getting all the toys up. In some kind of way, I dozed off, and I woke up, and she was under me. Wait a minute, but, under but, you? But when, I woke, but when I woke up, when I woke up, Miss, Miss Barker had came in the room going crazy on us. Mr. Davis was asked, 
Have you had sexual intercourse with any of your wife's family members? What was his response? His response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. I'm just done. Mm. With, I'm done with the marriage. It's over. I'm done with it. It's over. Our staff touched base with Miss Barker, and she says fighting out the truth was all she needed to move on without him. Earlier on, we took a quick look at the case of Vani versus McKellar. He admitted cheating with a porn star, and his longtime girlfriend also accused him of cheating with someone close to her. He was messing around with my friend's daughters. And he always looks for her on Facebook, always searches for her. I don't know why. I want to know why. We want to know why, too. <laughs> when I disappeared in the five weeks, this was the, was the person in 2015 that I did cheat on with. Oh. And uh, I told you this. No, you did not. I told you before. What else are you hiding? I told you before. <sighs> okay, so him telling you today is the first time yes, you're hearing this? Yes. How long ago did this happen? 2015. <laughs> the court followed up with the couple, and Miss Vani told us that she and Mr. McKellop are still together and are talking about finally getting married. She's been in love with him for such a long time, and I do hope they can work it out. Our next couple came to court because Miss Wells believed her boyfriend was spending too much quality time with his clients. Mr. Mapp insisted he was just a club promoter, but was he mixing business with pleasure? Are there any other women in particular that you're concerned about? His female business partner. Okay, and why are you concerned about her? Well, she came about two years ago um, out of nowhere, and then now all of a sudden they're best friends and they're always together. They took a business trip that was supposed to be one day. It ended up being three days. Well, that's the truth, though. We, we added some extra stops, but nothing inappropriate happened. You believe that they are actually intimate? Yes. You asked Mr. Mapp, since 2015 up until now, have you had physical sexual contact or intercourse with your business partner, Ms. Owsley? What was his response? Your Honor, he pleaded the fifth and refused to answer the question. It makes no sense. Why would I have to be asked to question this? It's so obvious. Like, it ain't no way. You could have answered the question. There's no way. I think this is the first time that this has happened in this court. How do you feel about the fact that he pleaded the fifth and he's, refused he's to answer? He's probably guilty. There ain't no way. After the case, we had his business partner take a polygraph test to see if their relationship extended from the boardroom into the bedroom. And we have the results right here. We asked Ms. Owsley, since becoming business partners up until now, have you had physical sexual contact with your business partner, Mr. Mapp? What was her response? She said no and the lie detector determined that she was being deceptive. Let's see if that information has made a difference in their relationship. Our relationship is, is way too strong. It's way too strong to let, you know, a few bumps in the road mess up anything. I'm done with the games, and I just want to make it work. So we living happily ever after. Now, in this next case, Mr. Taylor found an outrageous sex tape of his wife with another man. But when he came to court, he still had hopes of reconciling his marriage. At this time in our life, man, that was my best friend. That was my lover. That was my homie. That was, that, that, that was, my, that was my other half. We did everything together. I was adopted. I ain't had the chance to really experience a real good family life like most people. So she know that like, that's something that I really want to structure in my life is to, is to build and have a family. So your belief and that she's lying and that she's cheating has driven, literally driven you from your home with her. Gone, yes. I was in Mr. Taylor's corner. He really wanted his family back. But then, Ms. Jackson dropped a bombshell. Yes, she did. But we're gonna save that until after the break. Stay with us and don't miss the outrageous conclusion to this case. Couples Court is back, and we're wrapping up with one of the most outrageous cases we've had in our courtroom, Taylor versus Jackson. Miss Jackson was a woman who was clearly caught between her lover and her husband. Take a look. Mr. Charles, when was the last time that you were intimate with Miss Jackson? 
this morning. Miss Jackson, were you intimate with Mr. Charles this morning? See how, re see how I react? Quiet. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Life goes on. You chose, you made your decision. I can't keep on trying to rescue you for your own decisions. You gotta live with them. I couldn't believe she did that. You want to reconcile with your husband, but you're still sleeping with the man you made the sex tape with, and you bring him to court? Well, apparently, that was the last straw for Mr. Taylor. He told a member of the staff that the relationship is over. That's all the time we have today. Thank you for joining us. There's one last thing I want to do. What's that? Well, all the couples who come into our courtroom have these great selfies. So you want to take a selfie? I think it's called an ussy. OK, let's take an ussy. And while we take our ussy, please enjoy some of the best ussies we've seen this season. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Smile, Mr. Cutler.